In this chapter, we'll see some grammar transformations. The goal of these transformations is to obtain a new grammar satisfying some properties related to simplicity while preserving the generated language. These properties will allow us to reason about grammars in a simpler way and to obtain simpler algorithms for them. The goal of the first transformation is to remove lambda productions, that is, remove the rules whose right hand side is the empty word. For example, this grammar has two lambda productions. Our goal is to remove them. However, we cannot just erase these rules since we want to preserve the generated language. Note that if we simply erase them from A and from B, it won't be possible to generate any word, since we would always obtain either an A or a B after applying a replacement. In order to remove the lambda productions, we'll first compute the set of nullable variables. That is, those variables that can be rewritten into the empty word in one or more rewriting steps. Here we have an algorithm for computing the set of nullable symbols. In first place, we mark as nullable those variables that can be rewritten to them to a string in one step. Next, we keep on marking other symbols as nullables. At each step, if a variable has not been marked as nullable, but it rewrites to a concatenation of nullable symbols, it is clear that it is nullable as well. The algorithm ends when no more nullable symbols are detected. In our example, the algorithm will detect, in the first step, that A and B are nullable, since they rewrite into the empty word in one step. In the loop, it will detect that S is nullable, since it rewrites into the concatenation of two nullable symbols. In summary, S, A and B are nullable, since the empty word can be reached from all of them by rewriting. Here we have our algorithm again. Let's try to get convinced that it computes all the nullable symbols for any grammar. It is clear that all the symbols that are marked as nullable are actually nullable. This can be easily proven by induction on the number of execution steps of the algorithm. We still have to see that every nullable symbol is marked at some step. It can be proven by induction on the number of necessary steps to mark every symbol. If a symbol x is marked in one step, then it is clear that there is a lambda production for x. Hence, x has been marked in the first step of the algorithm. Let x be a symbol marked after more than one step. Then we have a derivation of this form, where the first step has been made explicit. The right hand side of this first step must be a concatenation of variables. Otherwise, since terminals cannot be erased by subsequent steps, the empty word would not be reached. Moreover, some subderivation from each of these variables must reach the empty word, since otherwise the obtained terminals wouldn't be erased. Hence, there is a subderivation from each of these variables ending in the empty word, and with less rewriting steps. Hence, we can apply induction hypothesis and conclude that all of them has been detected as nullable. Since all x1 to xn will belong to the set nullable at some step of the execution, we know that x will also be at nullable in the instruction inside the loop of the algorithm. This concludes the proof. Let's see now how computing the set of nullable symbols is useful in order to remove lambda productions. Consider a grammar G. The removal consists of transforming the set of rules of G in a new set of rules defined as follows. The new rules are obtained by choosing one rule from G, choosing some of the nullable symbols of its right hand side, and erasing them while avoiding the addition of a lambda production. Let's go back to our example. In this case, the resulting grammar after the removal of lambda productions is this one. Note that for the right hand side AB, we can either 
do not erase anything, erase B since it is nullable, or erase A since it is also nullable. We cannot erase both since it would force us to add a lambda production. For the case of the right hand side, lowercase a, uppercase a, we can either do not erase anything or erase uppercase a since it is nullable. For the case of the right hand side, lowercase b, uppercase b, we can either do not erase anything or erase uppercase b since it is nullable. Lambda productions are not that. The intuitive idea behind all this is the following. In the original grammar, before this transformation, we were able to rewrite S into AB. Moreover, A was nullable. Since we'll remove all lambda productions, it won't be nullable anymore. What we do is to look ahead and erase it in the first rewriting step. Each time we erase a nullable symbol from a right hand side, what we are doing is to look ahead and erase now what we want to be able to erase in a subsequent writing step, since now we do not have lambda productions. Let's try to get convinced that this process preserves the generated language, except for the empty word. Here we have, again, the definition of the construction of the new set of rules. We'll try to argue that in general, from each variable x and each word w different from lambda, we can reach w from x using g if and only if we can reach w from x using the new grammar g'. This will allow us to conclude that the transformation preserves the generated language, except for the empty word. It is easy to get convinced that with the new grammar, we do not generate more words. This is because each rule from G' can be simulated by several steps with G. It suffices to apply the rule of G that we use to create the one from G' and apply derivations into the empty word for those variables that were erased in the rule of G'. Those derivations into lambda must exist since the erased variables were nullable in G. Let's see that the language is preserved in the other direction. We'll see it by induction on the number of applied writing steps. Consider any derivation from G from a variable X into a word W. Here the first step has been made explicit. We have derivation in less steps from each alpha i into the corresponding Wi, and the concatenation of all the Wi's results in W. By induction hypothesis, for all the wi that are not lambda, there are derivations from alpha i into wi using g'. Now, for each alpha i, we define beta i as alpha i if alpha i was not erased, that is, the corresponding wi is not lambda, and otherwise we define beta i as lambda. Since our transformation ensures that beta 1 until beta n is a right hand side of x in g', with g' we can apply this rewriting step and then apply previous subderivations until reaching w again. This concludes the proof. Here we are preserving the language except for the empty word. If we want to totally preserve it, we are forced to have at least one lambda production. Here we have the grammar of our example once transformed. We also add a new initial symbol that chooses between generating what can be generated from S or directly generating the empty word. We say that a grammar is almost lambda free if either there is no lambda productions or it has just one lambda production from the initial symbol and in the later case, the initial symbol does not appear in any right hand side. This implies that if the lambda production is not used in the first step, then no lambda production is used at any time. Hence, in the derivation of any word different from the empty word, no lambda production is used.